Good morning and welcome. This is Dr. Benu Peniha. I'm glad that you are here. Today our meditation is going to be based on Apostle Thomas. This sermon is part of the series called Encounters. This one, Encounter of Jesus after his resurrection. The text is taken from Gospel according to John chapter 20 verses 19 to 31. Saint Thomas or Apostle Thomas or Doubting Thomas has received very little significance in the Western Christian theology. Apostle Thomas played a significant role in my personal journey and in my journey of faith because I grew up in a St. Thomas Syrian Christian family or St. Thomas Christianity back home in India. In my theological journey, we always had scholarly discussions and dialogues about his arrival and ministry and possibly other historical arguments. Recently, when I was studying Simon Peter as a biblical character, I saw there are other characters that, are, that were given less importance while we study the synoptics and the John Ayn Gospel from a different character framework. The nickname ascribed to him was Doubting Thomas or the synonym for doubt, unbelief, lack of devotion. As someone coming from a St. Thomas Christian family, I did not merely see him as a Doubting Thomas, rather I see him as a rational being and as a believing Thomas. The modern day charismatic and liberal inversion into the academic world has given due respect to liberal and modern theological streams and ancient characters and their contributions were not given due respect. To dive deeper, we have the Synoptic Gospel account and the Johnian account or the Gospel according to John's account. Uh, especially in John's account, we see in chapter 11 verse 16, 14 verses 5, 20 verses 24 to 29 and 21 verses 1 along with book of Acts in the Gospel of Thomas and the book of Thomas the Contenter, the Acts of Thomas and the infancy Gospel of Thomas mostly most of them are apocryphal documents or all of them are apocryphal documents other than the Synoptic and John Ayn Gospel. As part of being the St. Thomas Christian community I also have heard so many extra canonical details about St. Thomas uh, from the communitarian perspective or from a living oral tradition. Without doubt, we know from the historical or travel documents, uh, India has well established trade relationship with the rest of the world even before the beginning of Christianity or before the post-resurrection period. It was also proven beyond doubt the apostleship of St. Thomas in India or in other world, uh, church fathers, historians, archaeologists, travelers, and everyone in between connects St. Thomas with the greater India even though it is interconnected uh, with the Persian church. Throughout the biblical narratives, Thomas was introduced as a spiritual twin of Jesus. And thus the mystical and historic traditions related to him continue to develop. Thomas's character is attributed to miracle stories such as rising of Lazarus, resurrection of Jesus and miraculous catch of fish and many more stories or miracles associated with him. Within the Indian oral traditions, uh, unlike the written document, there are there there is no literary evidence and Saint Thomas come to Kerala. But scholars have argued substantially on the prevalence uh, strength of uh, oral tradition. One of the prominent stories about Saint Thomas is the story recorded by Zelisky, uh, a historian or a writer. He says, on July, uh, on the day of the full moon, Thomas went uh, to the Brahmin quarter. Uh, he was passing by a pond which was sacred. 
and many Brahmins or the high caste of those days were bathing or uh, offering worship. They took water in their hands and throw into the air as a ceremonial ritual. Thomas asked them why they do so and they replied we are offering it to the gods. Thomas the Apostle said do not the gods reject your offering? See the water fell down into the pond. They said such is the nature of the water. So it was made so that it fell, it falls always down. The apostle then took some water in his hand and threw it into the air. And the drops remained suspended uh, shining like so many jumps uh, then uh, fell at Thomas's feet in a shower of beautiful flowers whose fragrance uh, filled the whole place. Many of the high caste uh, of those days then followed uh, the apostles' faith and the uh, apostle instructed them or taught them and baptized them. There are many variations of this stories uh, exist in an oral format uh, in our tradition back home. I remember my great uh, my grandmother telling me all those stories when I was so little and I remember those stories just visible as it is happening even just now today in our midst. There are so many other miracles like this one performed by Apostle Thomas which exists in the oral tradition uh, in the oral traditional form in India. The identity recorded of St. Thomas is hostility, curiosity, respect, awe, and love. There was another powerful uh, migration took, uh, recorded in the history under the leadership of Thomas of Cana uh, along with 70 other families from Jerusalem, Baghdad and Ninawe uh, in the 4th century AD. They never become a mixed race even till today back home in Kerala, the state I come from. Thomas of Cana received uh, copper plate uh, grants or privileges which were also shared with the St. Thomas Christian community or the original community that exists in India such as access to jungle land and the permission to build house and churches use of uh, seven kind of musical instrument, travel in the uh, palak, all that means just like people can carry you as a celebrative ritual, uh, whistle with a finger in the mouth, spreading a carpet on the ground and the use of sandal or to erect a pandal, that means a celebrative, you know, decorate your place and uh, when you have a festival. And another one is a f uh, interesting one to the privilege to ride on elephants. This even extended to conduct uh, business locally and internationally. Many of these are high caste privileges on those days. In the scripture of our meditation today, it is very appropriate one. The text talks about fear, internalized fear of phobia, uh, locked doors and uh, misunderstanding and everything in between. Christ pronounced three times in this text Peace be with you. If there is anyone who could pronounce peace, it is Christ who overcome death. Uh, our rational mind seeks for evidence. There is nothing wrong with this. We should, uh, we would like to know how we can overcome fear, anxiety and uncertainty. Thomas says, unless I see the nail marks uh, in his hands and put my fingers where the nails were and put my hands into his side, I will not believe. Later on when the apostle uh, confessed uh, about Christ, they say, Said in 1st John chapter 1 verse 1 that which was from the beginning which we have heard which we have seen with our own eyes which we have gazed up 
on and touched with our own hands. This is the word of life. May I pronounce peace in your life today. May the peace of Christ be at your dwelling place today. May the peace of Christ be at your heart today. When you see the Hebrew root for this word is called shalom. Shalom is, uh, is normally used in the context of restitution. Make someone whole and complete. The word is used uh, uh, to, to mean wholeness, completeness, welfare, tranquility, and whole and complete. It talks about a lack or absence of war. Uh, when Paul refers, he says, the peace of God which transcends and surpasses all understanding. What our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard, what we have touched with our own hands. It is not a it is not an utopian idea. You know, what motivated uh, Thomas to go all the way to India in search and to be, become a martyr, become a, giving his own life for, for what he believed. And he says, my God and my Lord. The Bible talks about he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, he he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I will I trust. When we truly cry out to God, when we truly see God's peace, uh, it does pass all human understanding. Making peace with God is at its core a spiritual reconciliation between a broken relationship. Jesus genuinely wants to make that peace possible. That is why he is willing to suffer, die and raise from death. Shalom comes from the same root word which has the following derivations in meaning such as it was worth it, it was paid for, paid for in advance, whole and perfect. Are you gripped by fear? choked by worry, are overwhelmed with anxiety? Do you feel like you are drowning in the news of global threats, political uncertainty, pressures and personal fears about health, wealth and money? The resurrection of Christ and his appearance is the best antidote for respond to fear, anxiety and worry. In Christ, you and I can find hope and peace. Contentment does not come from what you have. It comes from who you know. God's promises keeps our fear, worry and anxiety in chalk. This is the message I think we all need right now. Locked door at social distance. Christ comes and stands among the disciples inviting them to trust. Despite our being denied and gathering and the experience of Eucharist for a time, we will truly uh, heightened by the visual imaginative experience of the scripture. You may have also heard the word prax in, in, the, in its Latin form talking about peace. Pax Romana is a very common word. Roman peace. It simply means absence of war. Currently we have declared war against the virus called COVID-19. May God grant you victory, peace, shalom, the wholeness, harmony, completeness, prosperity, tranquility and welfare. If you know the serenity prayer, please pray this prayer with me. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference living one day at a time enjoy one moment at a time amen how simple it is may God help us to do that pray with me God of peace God of comfort come into our heart we all struggle in the midst of suffering, anxiety, fear and worry or in the midst of confusion. We all struggle with our faith. May God you come and appear yourself in our life evident of healing and miracles and resurrection and its power of God. Come into our heart. Protect our community. I stand in the gap for our community right now, our church right now. 
You are a miracle working God. Continue to do miracle in our life. Do it one in our life today, O oh God. Come and appear yourself while we are having our Sunday morning in our homes uh, with our children, with our grandchildren. Lord, we ask you, O oh Lord, to heal everyone. Take this virus away from our world. Restore our economy. Restore our churches. Restore our ministry. Restore each and every one of us, O oh God. We give you the glory and honor. We thank you for your protection. We thank you for your healing. In Jesus' precious name, we offer this prayer. Amen and Amen. Thank you for listening. Please tune into this channel or this YouTube. Please subscribe and we will be coming to you every week uh, in a virtual format until uh, uh, all this is uh, over. Uh, be safe. Uh, may God bless you. This is Dr. Binu Peniel uh, signing off.